Good morning, grandkids. As I've told you before, um, all through my past, ever since I was a child, I've been writing bits and pieces of stories and never finished a book until just lately. But I came across, in looking back through some of my stuff, I came across this that I really want to read you, and I'd really like to uh, do something with it. This is from a book that I had start, been writing some scenes out of. I used to just write different scenes and put them away in files, never do anything with them. This was a scene that I had written for a fantasy book that I wanted to write. And uh, the, the wizard in the book is the older gray-headed father, and he's the wizard of the community that this book was supposed to be set in. But this guy, Val, is the teenage, older teenage son of the wizard. And he's a wizard in training. Well, his father had wanted to find out something about this dark, sinister person with his dark, sinister creatures that did not live in their area but kept sending oh, dragons and stuff into their kingdom to sort of scout the place out to see if he could take it over. Well, he sort of lived in another dimension. And Val's father wanted Val to go there incognito, and investigate and find what he could find out about this man and his kingdom, his dark kingdom. Well, Val wasn't enthusiastic about going, but his dad sent him anyway, like Shazam or poof, you're gone. So when Val comes to, this is a little section of his story. And I wanted to read this to you. This particular section is Val and Trigorn. Val's eyes snapped open. He panicked. Where am I? More panic. Nothing. Darkness. Am I blind? Cold, soundless darkness. More panic. Maybe I'm dead. No, he wasn't dead. His head hurt too much. Groaning, Val reached up and touched it cautiously. He realized he was sprawled on his back, his head on a large, jagged rock. No wonder I hurt. He moaned, trying to struggle to his feet, but that made the throbbing in his head worse, and he was dizzy. Best to sit here for a bit. He touched the back of his head and felt it alone. Finally, wetness was matted in his hair. He wiped it off on his breeches. Darkness still surrounded him. Deep darkness, cold and dank. With a vague impression that he was in a cave, he felt around beside him, and his hands moved over dirt. Not smooth, but scuffed up. Bits of rocks and twigs. He was still in a black void, empty of sound. Something soft with claws scurried over his fingers. He jerked his hand back. He hadn't started to panic yet, but soon, he thought, any minute now. He managed to get to his feet and shuffled around a little, his arms outstretched, hoping to feel something, anything. Well, not just anything, he mumbled. This could be a lion's den or a burial cave. He was startled at the hollow, echoing sound of his own voice. He stooped over, feeling around in the dirt again, and his hand touched a slim, smooth object. It felt like a long piece of wood, but it had knobby ends. <clears throat> he picked it up, 
thinking that he could use it as a weapon if need be, he slowly straightened back up, weapon in hand. Suddenly, twin yellow lights came screaming at him out of the darkness. Al threw himself back on the ground again, crying out in pain as his knee hit something hard and jagged. Probably that same stupid rock he cried out in the window. He peered behind him, knowing that at least he wasn't blind after all. There, on a rocky ledge, not ten feet away, perched a thylodite. Its big yellow eyes glowed malevolently. Val's brain began to kick in, and he glanced around for any means of escape. He had heard of Thylodites, in stories old men told, most tales of these creatures claimed they haunted another kingdom far away. Maybe once in each generation had one ever been seen in the kingdom of Linwick. Some even said they came through from another dimension. No one really believed these tales, though. Considering them the product of some old man's vivid imagination. Or a myth. Well, there sits a myth, Val muttered wearily, his own voice again catching him off guard. It was larger than Val, who was over six feet. Besides large yellow eyes, it had an elongated, red, rough textured face. The rest of its body was sickly gray. The leathery-looking wings were slightly spread in a menacing way. Its taloned, scaly feet gripped the ledge it was on with fierce strength. The glow of its eyes enabled Val to dimly see his surroundings. About five feet to the right of the trilodite, thylodite, there was an opening through a rock wall with a tunnel beyond. He could see now that all the walls were rock with a dirt floor scattered with stones and twigs and debris. Even some bones over there, he thought grimly, which Luke looked suspiciously like human remains. He glanced down at his hand, realizing what he was holding. He dropped the bone to the ground with a shudder. He glanced at the thylodite and then at the opening. He made a move toward the tunnel, and immediately the creature was standing in front of Val's escape route, its leathery, ribbed wings spread wide. Am I a prisoner here, then? Val asked, shrugging his shoulders. To his astonishment, the thylodite spoke. I am Trigorn, his voice, deep and guttural. I am the guardian of the mordant caves of the realm of Everdoon. And no, you are not a prisoner. Yet, he leered evilly. Val's throat was dry, and a trickle of fear crawled down his back, mingling with the blood from his head. Well, try, Gorm, he managed to say, since I don't know how I got here, or even where here is, could you just help me out a bit? Val asked the guardian. I'll be on my way and won't disturb you anymore. The thylodite didn't speak, but kept his yellow eyes on Val. Would that passage behind you lead me out? Val tried again. As guardian of the Morden Caves, I cannot let you pass this way where it leads to the cavern of the sacred dead, where rest the bones of the old gods. Val glanced around at the pile of bones. Hmm, some of them must have tried to get out, he said, as he glanced back at Trigorn slyly. No, others like you have tried to get out. Their bones now turn to dust, Trigorn smirked. Val really thought it was time to get out of here. He looked behind him and was startled to
to see another passageway a few feet away. He suddenly sprinted toward it. He was surprised he didn't feel the creature's hot breath on his neck. His injured head was really throbbing now. Once he passed through the opening, he looked back. There stood Triborn within the portal, with his wings spread wide, preventing Val from returning that way. It spoke once more. Your path lies ahead of you, and your destiny awaits you there. Don't be foolish enough to return this way. And it grinned evil, its mouth stretched wide, with sharp teeth bared. Giving old Triborn a salute, Val moved cautiously up the tunnel the other way. So what did you think about that? It belongs in a story that I was writing. Maybe I'll go right back to it and write some more. Maybe I could start writing it and uh, letting you see all of it on here like I'm writing a Dorkley's book. Maybe. We'll see. What do you think of this? Okay, let me know that first. I'll talk to you all later, grandkids. It's always fun reading to you. Bye-bye.